what causes someone to drop a comic book? Um, we see a lot of threats, like I'm going to stop collecting this, or I've, I've dropped this from my pull list. But what are the actual factors that cause somebody who's maybe a longtime collector to actually drop the comic from their pull to stop their, their story? Um, I think there's some obvious ones and some not obvious ones. I'll talk about this from a retailer perspective. But what I've heard, you know, first time to count when somebody comes in and says, take it out of my pull box. I'm going to tell you what I've heard. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, you, you hear a lot about uh, taking titles off the pull box. You see people threaten, I'm, I'm no longer going to get this title. I won't buy it. I won't give this creator my money. And that's fine. That's, that's the social media dialogue around the topic. But the actual in-shop or through email or through phone, but usually it's, it's in-shop and, and in, in mail. I would say of the people who are adjusting their pull list, um, it, it typically is about 50-50 of, well, I'll, I'll put it this way. It's about 50% in-store, 45% email, 5% phone. Nobody likes to do it over the phone. It's, and, and nobody likes it. The customer or the or the shop likes it on the phone. Uh, but anyway, uh, generally speaking, uh, when somebody's dropping an item from the pull list, they give a reason why. Uh, what's interesting is on social media, I had this discussion on Twitter and somebody said, well, nobody would ever give the reason why they drop the title from the pull list, especially if it was for ideological, political, or, or they don't like the creator. They would never say that in the shop. And I found that's not really the case. I mean, everybody's situation is different. So make no mistake about it. I'm not saying it's, it's absolute. But I would also say that comic fans are usually not shy about letting people know what they're thinking. I mean, that's one of the interesting and kind of magical parts about comic fans is that you don't see them going, uh, well, I need to I need to hide my religion, politics, or, or whatever idea, that typically comes out in the shop. People, for whatever reason, in a comic shop, it's almost like a, a therapist. People are willing to say those things. Not always. And and I'm sure there, there are many of you who do not. But, I, you know, I, I hear it. The, the biggest reason, I mean, get the obvious ones out of the way. The biggest reason somebody drops a title is because either one, the creative team has changed on it. That would be you know, if we're playing Family Feud, that would be the number one item with, you know, I would say 80%. It's the creative team has changed. People don't like it. And number two being the price has been raised. And and you see this in waves when the prices change in comics. You see the, hey, it's just, it's too much for me. Those are kind of the two. Um, comics provide a jumping off point from time to time. A lot of comic companies say we're, we're giving you a jumping on point, but it's a double-edged sword. I think any publisher who gets too you know, excited about this, you know, we're creating a jumping on point for new readers needs to understand they're also creating a jumping off point. If, you, if you're creating a, a bold new status quo, you're giving people who may have been on the fence about your title a reason to hop off of it. And they will uh, from time to time. So uh, that's probably the number three reason is just there's been a, a shift in the comic that they're, they're doing a, a bold new storyline. And, and for a lot of people who have been kind of waiting to hop off the book, and, and this is probably, I would say, most common when the title is uh, when when the title is new. So let me see. How do I say this and illustrate it? So let's say you have a brand new comic, brand new number one issue. A lot of people will come into that comic, and when somebody adds it to their poll right away, I'm a little suspicious, and I even account for that in my ordering going forward because a lot of people will. Uh, rather than say, I just want the number one issue, they'll say, I want this added. In fact, some stores won't let you do it that way. If you're going to subscribe to it, you're subscribing. And so they'll say, I want this, this number one issue in my box, or I want this first arc in my box, or maybe they're thinking that, but they don't necessarily say it. They, they just want to make sure they get that first arc. So in the lifespan of a title, it comes out, there's some attention with that number one issue. And then usually around the six issue mark, uh, there's a, there's a drop of people who have subscribed. There's there's kind of an ongoing erosion for stuff on the shelf, but in four pull boxes at the issue six to seven mark, that's where you lose maybe 20, 25% of the people who have subscribed. It's right around that mark. And then from there, it tends to be kind of what I mentioned earlier, creative team changes, the price goes up, or there's just some some other factor. Um, now we get into kind of the, the less obvious ones. So those three really make up the bulk of why people drop titles. 
um, historically. That's always that's that's what it is. Then you get into um, things like this title has too many crossovers. That's been a big issue. That was a big issue with uh, Al Ewing's Mighty Avengers and that it lost people of saying, I just I didn't buy this title. So we cross over into a bunch of other titles. That's been a, a complaint more at Marvel, obviously, than DC, because they tend to do more of it. But that's been a, an ongoing one that I, I would say has been consistent through the years. There's too many tie-ins that interrupt the flow of the story, cause people to hop off. So there's that. Um, another one that is, uh, that is certainly true is that at some point, so the reader has gone on social media, has discovered that the creator has blocked them, and decides to drop it. That one's you know impossible to predict. It's not going to happen you know in the middle of an arc or other things. Um, more often than not, and I know there will be some people who disagree with me. More often than not, the reader gets disgusted, gets frustrated that they are blocked, but they don't actually drop the book. They just kind of grumble about it. They're mad. Maybe they don't go for some new thing. But there's this thought process I think that goes through a lot of fans' heads of, well, I'm already collecting it. I'm already, you know, I'm invested. So I'll just kind of wait to hop off at some point in the future. I'll finish this arc. And in a lot of cases with comic readers, they finish the arc. And then if, if the next issue is at all compelling, they go on, on the next arc. Um, it's, it's, it's not as much a driver for people leaving books as you would think. Uh, it does happen. I, I will you know, make no mistake about it. I've had people come in and call and say, Hey, I went on social media. I found out this guy was blocked me. Take me off all his comments. It has definitely occurred, and to say otherwise is is not true. Um, it's interesting because people tend to be on on two extremes on this topic when they discuss it online. Um, number one extreme is, uh, you know, I will always drop every comic, and everybody everybody drops comics whenever uh, they find out that they're blocked, and and the numbers just don't show that either anecdotally in the store or the ordering numbers. You don't see creators who have big block bot lists, uh, you know, you don't see these, these drops in, in comics. Again, not saying it doesn't happen. You just don't see it in mass, but there's the other side to that extreme is also not true. And that's where I've, I've seen creators say, you know, none of that translates to stores. None of the, you know, if, if I'm blocking people, it does not translate to sales whatsoever. And that is also not true. I, 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 I have gotten many people you know, again, not the majority. I've, I listed the majority earlier, but I have had on an ongoing basis, someone say, hey, I found out I was blocked by, you know, usually it's Al Ewing or it's Stan Slot. Those are just tend to be the two. Um, and, you know, I don't want, I don't want to know. They, they run, I, I guess it's Al Ewing, Dan Slot. a uh, little bit. There's been more noise around Donnie Cates, uh, but not much. And then um, uh, 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 Tom, um, Tom King. Uh, has been the other one that I've, that I've heard a lot about. So these are so these people. I, again, um, is it the majority? No. Does it never happen? No, it, it does happen. Um, is it enough that, that comic publishers and creators should be concerned about blocking and maybe put rules in place? I, I mean, that's hard to say. I, I think this is where it's a personal call. To me, if I'm a publisher, I would be worried about any erosion in my books, any any reason why people are leaving. And I, But to be fair with the topic, I'd be worried about the ones I mentioned earlier before I got to blocking. I would definitely be worried about uh, creating jumping off points for customers. I would be worried about shifting a creative team kind of unexpectedly that caused people to, to shed because those are the big ones. Uh, that's that's just the, the biggest factor. Um, the, the other reasons why people hop off, um, I have had people do the all, you know, they get mad at the publisher for doing something somewhere else, like maybe, uh, for example, and this is a this happened once, so this isn't a, a huge factor. But I had a customer who was very, very much into the the Uncanny X Men universe that uh, Matt Rosenberg and um, uh, Kelly Thompson and Ed Brisson had started to put together. They liked it, and um, they basically, when the announcement came that those books were going to be shuttered, and instead Hickman was going to relaunch everything. Um, there was a, an angry F.U. Marvel. So not only did the dominoes fall for the X books, the dominoes fell for everything, for Avengers, for Spider-Man, for everything that person was creating. And this comes up at time to time. This is where the publisher does something that the customer believes is so egregious that they just they, they stop cold turkey with all of it. Now, to be fair, the people who, um, who remove things out of their pull list out of what I'd say passion, 
out of being frustrated or, or enraged that they're blocked or um, or any of these, these there are many different reasons, um, they tend to come back. So if they, if they leave Marvel cold turkey, within six months, the, the Marvel you know, virus, for lack of a better word, has crept back in. They tend to come back. And I think that's, that's fairly common that that, that happens. I think that it's, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it, it's interesting. It, you know, things of passion tend to unwind and then people come back to comics. But things that well, that are more logical based, things that are, I don't mean logical like it, the other doesn't make any sense. You, you should be comfortable with where you're spending your money. But things like the creative team has left a title or the price has gone up and it's hitting your pocketbook. Those are things that are kind of hard facts. And those tend to be forever. If, if, um, if a creative team, you know, so you're really enjoying a book, creative team changes, I rarely see that customer come back onto that book. Just, just rarely happens. So... Anyway, those are the reasons people hop off. I'm sure there's more. I'm trying to think of some other things. I mean, every now and then, uh, well, actually, I'll go back to the last one again. When um, It's why it's always stuck in my head. When one more day happened and they removed the Spider-Man marriage and everything else, there was, there was multiple customers who were done with Marvel. Not just Spider-Man, but all Marvel at that point. And, and that always, I, I'm, I'm just, whenever you hear that kind of anger, it definitely sticks in my head. I'd also throw out there that certainly people drop titles and don't give a reason. Just like, eh, I'm not really interested anymore. And you can kind of tell when they don't really give a reason when it's like, eh, kind of nonchalant, I don't want it anymore. You can kind of tell that there is something else going on. And my assumption is always that, you know, they've, they've found a disagreement with the creator or there's, there's something that, that is afoot that's caused them to, to leave the title. Um, uh, you know, and, and who knows what those reasons are. Could be any number of things, and you know, could speculate. But what's the point of that? Uh, but it's uh, it, you know, comics are are interesting. Most times, readers are in it for life. It's one of the reasons why comics is such a good business, because you you tend to get customers that stick with you forever through thick and thin. And so, one of the reasons why I do focus so many videos on kind of trying to heal creator fan relationships or or trying to really get to the bottom of that is because. Uh, when you see cracks in that starting to form, when you see this lifelong relationship starting to break down, it's alarming uh, because this is this is one of the few businesses where you have this kind of loyalty. And, and so everybody involved, retailers, distributors, publishers, fans, everybody should be really alarmed when that starts to show signs of weakness. That's that's not a good thing. Uh, anyway, what are your reasons that you've dropped a title? would love to know in the comments below. Please leave them. Uh, like, subscribe, hey, join the party, uh, such as it is, and would love to uh, to hear more about it. Um, otherwise, uh, hey, uh, oh, oh, yes, of course, uh, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, uh, throw out your topic suggestions, always love to see those. I really appreciate them whenever I get them, and I do get to them, so I, I'm always very thankful. Which brings me to thanks for listening.